Since its discovery, Pluto has been the focus of almost continual discussion and investigation. A glance back into Pluto's history reveals not only how far astronomy has come, but also how far it still has to go. Over the previous century, a lot has happened in this frozen globe. Contrary to earlier beliefs that Pluto was an inactive ice dwarf planet, exploration of the planet revealed astonishing features that had never been observed before in our solar system. What Pluto-related find did NASA recently make? Is life really present on the icy planet? Join us as we take a look at NASA's unexpected discovery on Pluto. Pluto is the largest known dwarf planet in the solar system and was formerly thought to be the ninth and furthest planet from the Sun. The strange planet is found in the Kuiper Belt, an area beyond Neptune's orbit that is home to at least a trillion comets and thousands of stony ice planets, each measuring more than 62 miles or 100 kilometers across. Pluto's status as a planet came to an end in 2006 when it was reduced to a dwarf planet. The general public and scientists both expressed their opinions on this categorization, which spurred discussion. In 1905, Uranus was behaving oddly. Astronomers calculated the effects of several gravitational forces on the object's orbit before ruling out Neptune as the cause. Fortunately for science, a billionaire Bostonian by the name of Percival Lowell, famous for founding the Lowell Observatory, had an alternative theory in the shape of a distant, enigmatic planet he calls Planet X, which he theorizes is the reason behind the gravitational attraction. Lowell concluded that another object's gravity must be the cause of the orbital misalignment of these ice giants. Lowell dedicated his life to locating the mysterious solar body, but he passed away in 1916 and the mystery remains unanswered. The hunt was put on hold for 10 years as a result of the lengthy legal dispute between Lowell's widow and the observatory regarding her husband's legacy. The laborious task was finally assigned to 23-year-old researcher Clyde Tombow, who had to take paired photos of the night sky two days apart and compare them to see if any objects had moved. After months of laborious labor on February 18, 1930, he detected a change. Lowell's ninth planet was now being held in his lowly mortal hands. The Lowell Observatory receives a ton of named proposals after making its announcement in March 1930. The team chooses to follow the advice of an 11-year-old British girl after weeding through hundreds of bad ideas – Kronos, Zixmull and Minerva to name a few. Pluto, the god of the underworld, is an appropriate term for a planet whose orbit takes 248 years since it is so far from the Sun. Additionally, the first two letters, P and L, are the initials of Percival Lowell, the person who initiated the search. The discovery of Pluto was followed quickly by a deluge of inquiries from scientists. Additional measurements show that the globe has an odd oblong orbit and is far smaller than projected. It starts to occur to scientists that perhaps it might be categorized as a unique asteroid or an amazing comet-like object. Then, after going over Lowell's initial calculations again, astronomers understand that Pluto's discovery was a complete fluke and that Pluto's quirky orbit didn't require a planet X after all. Even yet, scientists are still looking for a possible gas giant beyond Pluto's neighborhood of dwarf planets and icy worlds known as the Kuiper Belt in their ongoing quest for Planet X. The Kuiper Belt can be somewhat solitary, but Pluto at least has a number of moons to keep him company. It was Charon, the first of them to be found, that allowed for the ultimate determination of Pluto's mass. It is impossible for Pluto to be the cause of Uranus's since-refuted orbital irregularity because its mass is barely 0.2% that of Earth. Since 1992, new telescope technology has made it possible for astronomers to find many frozen worlds in the area, making it more and more difficult for them to maintain Pluto's status as a planet, though it is later discovered Pluto at least remains the largest body in the neighborhood. When the American Museum of Natural History in New York decided to exclude Pluto from its exhibit on the solar system in 2001, 
the debate over how to classify Pluto became particularly heated. As a result of the public outcry, celebrity astronomer Neil deGrasse Tyson felt compelled to speak out in favour of the decision. On August 24, 2006, Pluto, the planet, was finally declared extinct in a move that shocked the entire world and shattered schoolchildren's learning systems. It is now categorized as a dwarf planet, one of the many in our solar system after losing its previous name. According to the International Astronomical Union, a planet must revolve around the Sun, be big enough to be rounded by its own gravity, and rule the area immediately surrounding its orbit. Pluto meets the first two criteria but regrettably falls short on the third. Consolation Prize, as a result of Pluto's downgrading, the word Plutoed is created, and in 2006 the American Dialect Society named it the Word of the Year. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft successfully passed Pluto in 2015 after years-long voyage across the solar system that included a pit break at Jupiter and revealed pictures of the dwarf planet in previously unseen detail. On NASA's Instagram accounts, one of the first images from the flyby held the record for receiving the most likes after nearly being lost by the excited scientists handling it. With the help of this fresh data, astronomers can now construct a far sharper picture of the distant dwarf planet, identifying ridges and craters in its varied terrain that was previously only a blur. The mountains of water ice, some of which reach heights of thousands of meters, are even more puzzling. They point to an internal heat source and demonstrate how geological activity on the dwarf planet is still highly active. Pluto is just around two-thirds as wide as Earth's moon and has a diameter of 1,473 miles, that's 2,370 kilometers, less than one-fifth the size of Earth. However, recent computer simulations show how fortunate Pluto is to be in its current orbit, as the dwarf planet is on the verge of a chaotic orbit that may perhaps destroy the cherished planet. In contrast to the orbits of the other planets, the old ninth planet's orbit is exceptionally long and tilted. Throughout its 248-year journey around the Sun, Pluto spends 20 of those years moving in and out of Neptune's orbit. They can never collide because of two aspects of Pluto's orbit, azimuthal libration and latitude libration. Azimuthal libration, a phenomenon where Pluto crosses Neptune's orbit, occurs when Pluto is constantly at least 90 degrees away from Neptune. On the other hand, latitude libration ensures that Pluto is always far above the solar system's plane and Neptune or any other large planets when it comes to proximity to them. Together, these two elements shield Pluto from harm. The survival of Pluto in this particular orbit has now been better understood by planetary scientists Takeshi Ito of the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan and Rinu Malhotra of the Lunar and Planetary Laboratory at the University of Arizona. Researchers found that Neptune, predictably, has the biggest influence on Pluto's azimuthal libration due to the two planets' 3-2 orbital resonance, which implies that Pluto orbits the Sun exactly twice for every three times Neptune orbits the Sun. But according to the simulations, Neptune doesn't have much of an impact on Pluto's latitudinal libration. Things start to go wrong when you factor in Uranus's gravity, because Uranus acts to weaken both azimuthal and latitudinal limitations. After tens or hundreds of millions of years, only these two planets could have caused Pluto's orbit to become unstable, leading to the possibility of a collision with Neptune or, more likely, the expulsion of Pluto from the solar system altogether. Jupiter and, to a lesser extent, Saturn preserve Pluto. Despite being further removed from Pluto, Neptune and Uranus still dominate due to their enormous gravitational pull. The gravitational force of Jupiter alone is sufficient to stabilize Pluto's orbit for at least 5 billion years, which is the period used in the simulations. The unexpected finding of this new research is how limited Pluto's zone of stability is and how the dwarf planet's existence was only made possible by a lucky alignment with the other planets in the solar system. Another distinguishing characteristic of Pluto 
is a large heart-shaped region on its surface, which is unofficially known as Tombow region. The left half of the region is covered in what looks like ice cream cone-shaped carbon monoxide ice. More variations in the surface material's composition have been discovered within Pluto's heart. In honor of the planet's first artificial satellite, Sputnik, the New Horizons team affectionately refers to a strikingly smooth region in the center left of the Tombow region as the Sputnik Planum. There aren't any craters on this area of Pluto's surface, which suggests that it isn't more than 100 million years old geologically. Geologic processes are probably still forming and changing this area. On these frozen fields, there are also black streaks that are a few kilometers long and directed in the same direction. The lines might be caused by strong winds sweeping across the dwarf planet's surface. One of the coldest places in the solar system is on Pluto's surface. Here, temperatures range from minus 375 to minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. When compared to earlier photographs taken of Pluto by the Hubble Space Telescope, Pluto looks to have become redder over time, potentially as a result of seasonal fluctuations. Pluto may have had a subsurface ocean, according to some evidence, but this is still up for debate. The past of Pluto may have been significantly impacted by the presence of underground water. For instance, scientists found that the zone of Sputnik Planitia, which New Horizons estimated to be around six miles thick, changed Pluto's orientation due to the area's high concentration of ice 10 kilometers thick. Although a thicker ice sheet or changes in the rock may be to blame for the shift, the researchers emphasize that a subterranean ocean is the best explanation for the observations after considering less likely possibilities. In a recent study, images of a location with two sizable mounds, which experts believe to be ice volcanoes, were examined. The results of the study suggest that the surface surrounding these mounds was probably created by the relatively recent activity of the ice volcanoes or cryovolcanoes. The finding indicates that these volcanoes may still be active and that liquid water or something similar may still be flowing beneath Pluto's surface. Furthermore, recent activity indicates that Pluto's interior is probably warmer than previously believed. Given previous recent discoveries, the researchers assert that their results may rise in the chance that there is life beneath Pluto's surface. The researchers looked at photographs of a region dominated by the Wright Mons and Picard Mons, two enormous mounds thought to represent cryovolcanoes. Wright Mons is a mound that is 2.5 to 3 miles or 4 to 5 kilometers high and around 90 miles, that's 150 kilometers wide, in comparison to Picard Mons, which is roughly 4 miles or 7 kilometers high and 150 miles or 250 kilometers wide. Incredibly deep depressions can also be found on the peaks of the purported ice volcanoes. The Wright Mons depression is almost as deep as the mount itself. In certain locations, the topography has a characteristic lumpy or hummocky appearance made up of undulating spherical mounds. According to the experts, these two enormous mounds may have grown over time as a result of the aggregation of smaller ice volcano formed mounds. Planetary scientist Kelsey Singer of the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado claims that on Pluto there were no other regions that resembled this one, and nowhere else in the solar system is like it. Fewer or no impact craters are present in this area of Pluto compared to the other areas which show that the surface was formed relatively recently in geological time. The lack of craters indicates that the area is relatively young between 1 and 2 billion years old, with certain areas possibly being only 200 million years old. Cryovolcanic activity on Pluto is presumably driven by radiogenic heat produced by the disintegration of radioactive elements in the dwarf planet's interior, despite the fact that scientists don't fully understand how it might function. Pluto lacks plate tectonics, the intricate system of moving continental crust that underlies geologic activity on Earth, but a similar event is one of the sources of heat in the Earth's interior. 
general tectonics, which may still produce characteristics like faults in rock, but lacks tectonic plates, is the term used by scientists to describe geologic activity like that on Pluto. These shield volcanoes on Earth, which are low-profile volcanoes formed by the slow build-up of lava flows into rounded structures, have several characteristics with Pluto's cryovolcanoes. Just picture the volcanoes on the Hawaiian Islands as opposed to an explosion like Mount St. Helens or Vesuvius. However, unlike what scientists believed occurred on Pluto, shield volcanoes often emerge from incredibly liquid lava. A caldera, which is the depression in the center of some volcanoes on Earth and other planets, is created when a newly erupted volcano collapses into the space left by all the debris it spewed forth. The shape of Wright Mons and Mauna Loa, a shield volcano in Hawaii that is one of the largest volcanoes on Earth, has a relatively small caldera, are similar in size, but the depression on Wright Mons is so deep that the volcano would have had to lose about half of its volume to be similar in shape, Singer said. There is still a lot that is unknown about these structures, their formation, and the functioning of cryovolcanism on Pluto. Given earlier studies that suggest Pluto was hot when it first formed and may still have a liquid ocean beneath its icy surface, the possibility of liquid water being beneath the surface of Pluto raises the odds of life existing there from practically non-existent to slightly more feasible. Data at many wavelengths and from multiple sources can help us build a more complete and comprehensive picture of Pluto with the help of the James Webb Space Telescope's groundbreaking advancements in sensitivity and resolution.